News 46, local coverage you can count on. Partners Medical Group. Our mission is to provide the highest quality of health care to each and every patient. With five locations in Pahrump, we are local doctors you know and trust. We want to thank you for choosing us. Quality care starts here. Pahrump Nugget is excited to announce October's Pumpkin Patch Match promotions. Every Friday and Saturday, every 30 minutes from 5 to 8.30 p.m., one hot seat winner will win $100. At 9, one of those winners will play Pumpkin Patch Match for $10,000. Looking for the best place in town to watch Monday Night Football? Look no further. We've got all the NFL action you need. For only $10, you'll enjoy a complimentary buffet, five raffle tickets for great prizes, Coors and Coors Light on tap for only a dollar. Where the fun never stops, Pahrump Nugget Hotel and Casino. International Gold Buyers are back at the Pahrump Nugget Convention Hall Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, October 21st, 22nd, and 23rd with over $1 million in cash, not checks, to pay you on the spot for your unwanted or broken gold, silver, and platinum jewelry. I walked out of fair with $1,700. I was so shocked, and he gave me a great deal. I love it. Nobody pays higher rates than International Gold Buyers. Stop by Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, October 21st, 22nd, and 23rd at the Pahrump Nugget Convention Hall. Be there. News 46 is brought to you by Healthcare Partners and Humana. News is also brought to you by Barry Levinson and Associates, Harumph's Bankruptcy Center. When it comes to important matters like bankruptcy, call an experienced, compassionate attorney. Call the Bankruptcy Center of Pahrump. Call 775-727-4747. News is also brought to you by Tire Works Total Car Care. Not your typical tire and service company. Guaranteed lowest prices on tires. Your one-stop shop for all automotive needs. Call 775-751-6100 or 702-365-TIRE. Tonight on News 46, one person is injured in a two-vehicle accident. And KPVM's Vern Van Winkle is honored for his contributions and achievements. And Express Fitness and Quiznos, mmm, they're toast. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46. With Rick Vale and Rhonda Van Winkle. Local coverage from Deanna O'Donnell and News Across Nevada with Janet Eric. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Tuesday, October 18th, 2011. I'm Rick Vale. And I'm Deanne O'Donnell for News 46. One person is complaining of knee pain following a two-vehicle accident yesterday afternoon on Highway 372 and Pahrump Valley Boulevard. Tonight's accident report is brought to you by Stovall & Associates. Don't expect insurance companies to have your best interest in mind. Stovall & Associates cares. Let us help you if you have been involved in an accident. A two-vehicle accident here on Highway 372 and Pahrump Valley Boulevard prompted Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue and Nye County Sheriff's deputies as well as Nevada Highway Patrol to the scene where the vehicles collided here. Both cars contained one occupant. The female inside the vehicle complained of knee pain. The other driver and only occupant of the other vehicle sustained no injuries in this accident. The one female declined medical attention on scene. Nevada Highway Patrol is investigating. This is Deanna O'Donnell on Highway 372 and Pahrump Valley Boulevard for News 46. 
Founder and president of KPVM TV, Vern Van Winkle, was honored this morning at the Board of County Commissioners meeting for his contributions to the community, as well as founding the Valley's first television station. With a dream and a prayer, he opened KPVM TV 15 years ago. Through economic ups and downs, Vern has consistently delivered premium broadcasting and local news coverage, while at the same time expanding the station to bring more options to our community. Uh -oh. A lot of times we have controversy in the community and a lot of negativism, but uh, uh, I've done one of these before for somebody I thought that uh, richly deserved it. And I am pleased today to present a very special award to a citizen who has contributed significantly to our community over a number of years. About 15 years ago, a man brought a dream of building and running a television station in our rural community. A dream that carried risk and required dedication, perseverance, and much hard work. The station and studio were built, the antenna went up, and the community received their very own TV station enthusiastically, as they were now able to uh, view local daily news and other important information in their own town. Grump's first TV station went on the air. September 12, 1997. Vern Van Winkle, come out of that little back room and come down here. Vern has used his resources of KPV on TV to help bring the community together, from, from public service announcements to televising town and county board meetings, to a special programming benefit, public service organizations. He has provided service to Pahrump and the surrounding areas. Him and his wife, Rhonda, been very active in the community, the Rotary, and many other organizations. They're always at all of the uh, uh, benefits we have here. And Vern, where are you? Over here, we got we got a surprise for you, buddy. We'll <laughs> give you this award, which you richly deserve. And uh, like I said, you know, there's a lot of negativism. This is a positive for somebody who has worked his butt off. And thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, I don't know what to say, but I really do appreciate it. It's been a long 15 years. And, uh, very happy about it. I don't know. Uh, I think one of the biggest things I can say is I'm really thankful that you guys allowed us to come in here. Because the public needs to, uh, they need to hear what you guys have to say. Bring up. And congratulations once again to Vern Van Winkle. Well deserved. The public is invited tomorrow night at 4.45 p.m. to meet the wife of Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney. Ann Romney will be in Pahrump at the home of Assemblyman Ed Goodhart, located at 3241 South Rainbow. And it's a very good opportunity for people to get a chance to meet her. All right, folks, the Clark County Office of Coroner Medical Examiner performed an autopsy on IndyCar racer Dan Weldon today. Weldon was pronounced deceased on October 16th at 1.54 p.m. at University Medical Center. The autopsy determined the cause of death to be blunt head trauma due to motor vehicle collision. The manner of death was ruled accidental. The coroner's office, with the permission from the Weldon family, will work closely with race officials, safety equipment professional, and the attending physicians to fully review the, this case in a continuing effort to help increase safety for drivers. The Clark County coroner wishes to extend their sincere condolences to Dan Weldon's wife and family, as well as their extended Indy Racing family. Yeah, he was working on safety equipment actually this past year for cars. So. It's good that they're going to continue that. The Prump Valley High School football team has been playing very aggressively this year. Two key players from our team were injured on Friday during the game with the Clark Chargers. The two players were number 21, Brandon Murphy, and number 23, Cody Kessling. Murphy suffered an unknown injury to his knee, similar to the injury his brother incurred while playing quarterback for the Trojans. It is unclear whether he will return to the field. Kessling suffered a clean break to his femur just above the knee. He had surgery yesterday morning and had a titanium rod placed in his leg. He will not return this season. There are only three season games remaining for the Trojans in their regular season. This weekend is homecoming for Front Valley High School in which the team will be playing Desert Oasis. 
from all of us here at KPVM, we wish our team good luck. And folks, coming up, Express Fitness and Quiznos close up shop without notice. And the Prump Arts Council is holding a huge yard sale to benefit the arts. We'll have all this and more right after the break, so please keep it here. News 46 is brought to you by... Southwest Medical Associates. Their healthcare center is now open in your neighborhood. Southwest Medical Associates. Now that's powerful medicine. And welcome back to News 46. Two establishments closed their doors this past weekend without notice. The problem is they owe money to their customers. As we told you on yesterday's news, two establishments here in town closed over the weekend without any notice to their clients or customers. One of them being here on South Highway 160 Express Fitness Center, as well Quiznos closed over the weekend too. We're being told that Express Fitness Center was actually moving out items late at night. We're also told that these two are somehow related. I know that Express Fitness Management was also married to the management there at Quiznos. That could just be a coincidence in this case. We've called all the numbers on all the establishments, including the investment company that rents out to Express Fitness. They said they didn't even know that they moved out, and they put us through to a voicemail. We've called all the other numbers that we've been told to call, including the ones that are up on the windows, with no response. We do know that we've got many, many complaints from people around town who said that they paid first and last for their gym membership here and that a deduction was just taken out just a few days ago out of their account to pay for this month's membership. We also spoke to Sergeant Kelly Jackson from the Nye County Sheriff's Office who also was cheated out of her money. She's urging everybody to contact the Nye County Sheriff's Office to file a complaint. Of course, we'll keep you posted of any further developments. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. Well, healthcare professionals joined together for Desert View Hospital's annual health fair this past Saturday. Deanna, we're here today again. Um, this is the uh, third annual one of these we've done. We do some immunization clinics for the children, but this is primarily an adult clinic. We are giving children flu shots, however, and people are welcome to come out and, and get them here today. But we've got a, a, a whole group of people that are here helping us uh, put this together, and we're very grateful for, for the support from the community and from the support from our community partners. This is so wonderful to get to meet all these doctors individually and find out more about what medical options that there is available. We just met a gastroenterologist who's saying he's operating out of Desert View Hospital now and so many other options and so many partners that Desert View Hospital has. Yeah, and that's just come about in the, in the last you know, 18, 24 months or so. And we, what we want to do is we want to be able to be a one-stop kind of place for our, uh, for our residents to be able to come and have services done. It's important that they're, that they're able to have their services here that we can do. There are not very many limitations anymore, uh, and we're grateful to do them and glad to have the, have the community come and help us uh, take, take part in that. Do you find that most of the citizens know how many um, places that Desert View Hospital reaches out for all different types of procedures and all different kinds of, of health options? Or is that common knowledge or are these health fairs helping you, helping people? The health fairs really help us um, get the word out to the community. That with some of our advertising, some of the outreach things that we do in the community really make a big difference in how, uh, how the community not only perceives us, but know that we're reaching out to the community to make sure that they have the services they, that they need. And more importantly, not that they need, but they deserve to have in Pahrump. It's so true. And when you're ill, it is just not a great drive to go over into Vegas. It's so great that we have all this different options here. We've got so many, uh, so many great physicians that are coming out here now and serving us from surgery to cataracts to gastroenterology, as you heard, uh, podiatry, and those are just a few of them that we're doing right now. So we're, we're just, um, we're growing and we're growing with the community and want the community to grow with us. Wonderful. And for more information, people can um, just call Desert View Hospital to find out any kind of procedures, get referrals to doctors. You can always call the hospital, 751-7500, uh, and talk to any of the department heads um, from radiology to surgery. All the department heads are accessible and be glad to talk to you. Thank you so much. 
Thanks, Deanna. Again, we appreciate all your support of these events. It wouldn't happen without you guys. And this Friday and Saturday, the Prump Arts Council will be holding a huge yard sale to benefit the arts. There's a Prump Arts Council yard sale last year, or actually in February. This was fabulous. Tell me what we're doing this weekend. Well, this weekend we're having another yard sale. Uh, we had one back in February. It was great. Uh, a lot of people showed up and got a lot of knickknacks and household goods. So we decided to do another fundraiser this month. So Friday the 21st mm -hmm. from 8 to 2 over at the Arts Council's office, which is located on 2340 mm -hmm. uh, East Calvada. It's the corner of Calvada and Honeysuckle. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a couple offices inside. So we have tons of stuff, tons of stuff. This is going to be really great. I don't know last time it was packed, but you have even more things this time. Yes, we have a lot more things. Uh, I brought in about five or six truckloads already and a couple trailer fulls, so we've doubled what we did in February. So we're also going to do it on Saturday, the 22nd, in the same time from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. And this all benefits the Prump Arts Council? Yes, it does. Every All the proceeds goes back to the Arts Council to help for, you know, educational or, you know, just main proceeds to help keep the doors open. And if people have some items that they would like to donate for this, can they still do that? Yes, they can do that. They can call 751-2667, uh, leave a message. Uh, somebody's usually there between 9.30 and 12, Monday through Thursday, or from 2 to 5, Monday through Friday. So you can call and leave a message or ask for Carol, and she's there ready to uh, accept donations and mark them. Can people even drive down there with their donations? They sure can. Uh, same times, 9.30 to 12 or 2 to 5 and drop them off. What time does the sale start this Friday? It starts at 8 a.m. and it's going to go until 2 mm -hmm. and also on Saturday, 8 a.m. till 2. Wonderful. So get down to uh, Calvada at the Prump Arts Council building and definitely get some good bargains. Oh, definitely. We have everything. Electronics, household items. We have knickknacks, camping gear. I even saw a couple pool sticks. I mean, there's all kinds of items down there. Bring your friends and just come down and support the Arts Council. An event will be held at the Lone Wolf Shooting Range this weekend. Tanya Brum invites everyone down to this event and, and a turkey shoot coming up in November. We're very excited about these. These two events are being done to benefit the Nathan Adelson Hospice Building Fund, which otherwise, uh, AKA, uh, Friends of Prump Valley Hospice. So that's what these two events are for. Linda DeMeo brought them to me last year. The first one is on October 23rd, which is next Sunday, not this coming Sunday, but the following Sunday, up at the Lone Wolf Shooting Range. And we're calling it the Zombie Shoot. So it starts at 9 in the morning, and it's a competition. And it's run by Master at Arms and the Lone, uh, Lone, Lone Wolf Shooting Range people who really know and understand guns and they're gonna they're making it fun it's a big competition twenty five dollar entry fee of that twenty goes to the building fund five dollars is just for to have the guns and everything else however their expenses and that's all everything goes to us vendors are invited to come up there too and they have to pay uh, Linda DeMeo is arranged with the um, VFW Auxiliary, the Ladies Auxiliary, yes. they're going to be there with like a barbecue kind of thing. So it's just a fun day and it's a family day. Um, all, you know, it's, they'll be shooting for everybody, can, can be involved in it and it's very, very safe. It's a really neat um, project, but it's gonna be a lot of fun and it'll introduce us to another, an entire group of people to help support it. What are some of the requirements? I know that you said everybody can come. Do you have to be 18? Do you have to have a certain type of weapon or? You know, that was my question, Deanna. And it was because I'm very nervous and I talked to the range master and he said that actually any age, but everyone will have to uh, be qualified through the range master. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that are the experts in the shooting. You can either bring your own a firearm mm -hmm. or you can uh, go up there and they will have firearms there for the competition and because the first one is the zombie shoot 
It's kind of uh, like 22s and uh, revolvers, like that kind of, of, of guns will be there, and that's the kind of thing you bring. Obviously, you're not going to be bringing an AK, because that would not be appropriate. We don't want to annihilate the zombies, just like put a hole in them. So, but that's, and age-wise um, is based on experience, because my husband was shooting guns at six years old, because he grew up out west hunting as a little boy. His dad trained him in that, but the, the, the range master will make sure that whoever is shooting is going to be qualified to do it, whether they're 10 or 90. Is this something for spectators to go to as well? Yes, I'll be there as a spectator because I want to watch this, and this is a great opportunity as a spectator because you'll get to learn about uh, the, the Lone Wolf Range. First off, you'll get to learn about uh, dealing with guns, and you'll, you'll get to be part of the fun. Well, is this beautiful weather going to keep up? I don't know. After this break, we'll have Zach Fuentes with a look at our weather. Keep it here. News 46 weather is brought to you by Healthcare Partners Medical Group with five locations in Pahrump, local doctors and professional staff providing total care from infancy to seniors. News 46 weather is also brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. For more information, you can visit their website at nevadadairycouncil.org. And welcome back to News 46, everybody. I'm Zach Fuentes here with your weather. Today, there were sunny skies out there, and our high was at 86 degrees. Our winds came out of the east-northeast at 5 miles per hour, and our gusts were up to 13 miles per hour. Now, the pressure dropped a little bit there at 30.16, and our UV index was at 6 high, and it has remained there for most of the week. Sunrise was at 6.53 a.m., and our record for today was back in 1958 at 95 degrees. Tonight we're looking at some clear skies, a low of 62 degrees, and our winds to come out of the east southeast at 4 miles per hour. The gusts are looking like they're going to be at 5 miles per hour, and the humidity will go up at 25%. The sunset will be at 6.06 p.m., and our record for tonight was 35 degrees, wow, back in 1938. Tomorrow, once again, we're looking forward to sunny skies, a high of 84 degrees. It's going down a little bit there, and a low of 60 degrees. The overnight low, too, will be going down. Our winds are going to come out of the southwest at 5 miles per hour, and our gusts are only going to be at up to 8 miles per hour. The UV index is going to go down now at 5, which is moderate, and our sunrise will be at 6.54 a.m. The humidity will be at 17%. And for our seven-day forecast, we're going to remain in the 80s, and possibly in the 70s. Saturday, you can see we're going to be bordering in the 70s there. We might go into the 80s. And Monday as well. Monday, we're going to have some clouds. And Tuesday, wow, we're going to have gusts at up to 42 miles per hour, it looks like. And our overnight low is going to be very chilly at 39 degrees. Other than that, though, the overnight lows are going to be pretty decent. And our highs are pretty warm, but fair. And today's worst weather was in Osprey, Florida, where they had heavy rain and strong thunderstorms. Back to you. Osprey, Florida. You ever been there? No, I haven't been anywhere. You've been from, you've been to Florida. I've been a couple of places. Have you? Yeah. Have you ever traveled anywhere outside of Nevada? I've been to London, Ireland, and France, and Hawaii. Oh wow. And, okay. Well, then you've been all over. I've been everywhere. That's about <laughs> it. And then. Uh, well, folks, Thursday night, October twentieth, will be an evening of art and wine from seven to nine p.m. at the Charleston Peak RV Park Clubhouse next to the Prompt Valley Winery. And you don't want to miss it because it's an opportunity to look at art and get drunk. Exactly. And the Prom <laughs> Arts Council is putting it on. It's really fun. And this Saturday, the moment we've been waiting for, the Rotary Club is holding their $10,000 cash giveaway. And, of course, tickets are still on sale. If you would like to get one, call 727-9400, extension 203, and ask for Vern Van Winkle. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this edition of News 46. I'm Rick Vale. And I'm Deanna O'Donnell. And from everyone up here in the Hill KPVM, we wish you a safe evening, and we'll see you here again tomorrow night. Until then, good night, Prom.